Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I know everybody's ready to head to Kansas City for Big 12 men's and women's. Uh, started spring practice today. Uh, our first uh, true practice in the combination indoor-outdoor. So it was tons of field space, uh, so much better um, to be able to open up the garage doors and have uh, uh, the defense was outside most of the morning, offense stayed inside, and then we were able to split some team reps up and use both fields and got a lot of stuff done, good energy out there. I think we have a little over 80 guys practicing right now this spring through all the offseason um, surgeries and some other injuries. So we're, we're down a little bit at numbers. Uh, the two positions that we're probably hurt the most on is tight end and defensive end. So we won't be in the, the double reps like we typically do. Our double reps in the spring become team on one end and seven on seven on the opposite end because we do have some DBs and wide receivers. So guys had great energy today. That's exciting. It was a quick off season. The guys were excited to be back out there. And we've got a lot of work to do. We have a lot of guys returning. But uh, obviously, we lost a number of talented players. So it's going to be a, a great evaluation for a lot of young players and new players. Considering the other options that he kind of had this off season, what was the process like to keep Colin Klein as your offense coordinator? Um, you know, everybody, when you have success, gets opportunities. And uh, we had a number of guys have opportunities. And, and I think at the time in his life for, for CK, um, we talked. We have unfinished business here. And um, uh, what a great uh, uh, opportunity he had to go and interview. And um, I know he and I got a chance to visit. He visited with some other people. And it was, uh, I think, the right thing for him to stay at K-State right now. We talked about a lot of the people we have returning as well as um, new players coming in. And uh, we've got some unfinished business. Being year two for him as the play caller this spring, is it almost easier to implement some of the wrinkles and everything that he wants to be a part of the offense? Yeah, you, you combine that with the amount of guys we have returning, I mean, especially when you think about a, a quarterback that's returning that uh, knows our offense inside and out and the amount of offensive linemen we have. I think there's a real comfort level uh, with CK to be able to throw a lot of things at Will Howard and, and be able to um, know that Will can make a lot of things right, um, just playing as much football as he has. But uh, no, I think we're way further ahead on, on offense than we are on defense just with the amount of guys we have returning. I know it's only been one practice, but just the offseason in general, what are the first impressions of Trayshawn Ward? Um, well, he's one of the guys that's out. So the uh, only thing he can do is individual right now. We're hopeful that he'll be able to do some more things probably after spring break or later on in, in March. Um, but uh, he's just doing individual right now. What went into your decision to have the two workout practices before spring break, send them off, and then bring them back in for the rest? Have done it ever since I've been here. Um, part of that is you have to get two of them out of the way in helmets and, and shorts. And the way the calendar lays, you always want to try to be done around April 15th to head out on the road. And so the last couple of years for us, it's been uh, hit the two practices before spring break, come back, and you have four weeks to really get in your 13 practices, which finishes up uh, so our guys can uh, head out on the road and start recruiting. What position groups maybe are you looking that need the most shoring up here in this offseason? Um, well, obviously, the running back spot, uh, DJ's not participating. He had uh, surgery, and Trey Sean's just doing individual. So uh, getting a lot of looks at uh, Anthony uh, Frias and, and uh, LeJames White and Shippers and Evan Cantu. There's a bunch of guys there that, that are going to get a lot of reps. And then um, the safety spot. You know, we lost a lot of guys that played a lot of football for us, and, and Kobe's not cleared yet to practice. So um, a number of new bodies there at safety, and – um, so those are probably the main two positions. Would you still consider going into the portal for anyone left over later on? You know, it, it's interesting. Um, we're pretty maxed out right now, um, but you just never know what's going to happen at the end of spring ball. There's one more window. We're, we're hoping we don't lose anybody, um, but um, that's the, uh, the thing about college athletics right now. You're always um, aware of it, and, and so there's a potential. Even though he's out, what is it that uh, drew you to Trayshawn Ward during the recruiting process? A um, couple things. Know some people at, at Florida State that spoke really highly of him. Uh, he was a guy that uh, we were able to get out and see 
Coach Anderson was able to get out and see him in, in January. I was able to get out and see him in January, so I got around um, some family. Um, you, know, you watch him on, on film, and uh, Florida State played a number of running backs, but uh, when he was healthy, he was the, the main guy. And I know he had a terrific game uh, against uh, Oklahoma in a bowl game, and uh, um, just acceleration, the ability to run through arm tackles, the ability to catch the ball out of the backfield. I thought he was in every down back. Uh, that um, gives us uh, more and more options and depth that we have with uh, uh, DJ and some of the other younger guys we talked about. Kind of same question for Keegan Johnson from Iowa. Um, yeah, well, Keegan, we were obviously more familiar with because it was us in Iowa all the way down to the to the end, uh, and he and he chose um, Iowa. And then uh, when he went into the portal, he reached out to us, which is you know. Uh, a lot of times it's it's the it's the inverse of that, but he reached out to us and was very interested in what we were doing here. It's not far from home. Um, I think he's uh, tr has tremendous versatility as being either an X, a Z, or an F for us in our offense. Um, you know, just watching him in winter conditioning, he's a very smooth, fluid athlete. He really can run. Um, watching him today, uh, in and out of breaks, catching the football in one day, um, uh, you can tell he's uh, a very seasoned kid for a, for a wide receiver. We're excited about him. I also wanted to ask about Matthew Middleton. What made you uh, want to hire him as your new receivers guy? Um, you know, he had spent some time with Coach Riley at uh, Nebraska Omaha uh, years ago, and uh, he was uh, familiar. You know, I was familiar, familiar with him because he was at South Dakota in the Missouri Valley. Um, a number of coaches uh, that we had visited with uh, spoke really highly of, of Matthew and, and his ability to teach, his ability to build relationships, his ability to recruit. Uh, interviewed uh, a handful of guys, Colin did, brought a couple of guys in um, and just thought it was the right fit. Um, and watching him out the first practice, he's got great energy. Um, uh, he does a really good job of connecting with, with the players. And so I'm excited to, uh, we were added, able to add Matthew. Is there additional flexibility in the usage of Khalid Duke in the upcoming season? Yeah. Um, you know, he's had the ability to play two positions for us in this new defense that we're running of defensive end and, and a little bit of linebacker. Um, as of now, we probably see him as a defensive end, um, but it's really hard for us this spring because we're down so many guys that um, we probably will have a, another package or another plan for uh, for Duke as far as is he going to just be a fourth rush or something and come from a linebacker spot? Is he going to stay as a stand-up guy? Can we can we move him around? I think we got to be really creative with Khalid because he has the ability to drop and he's shown that so well uh, that we don't want to just be, hey, you're a left end or right end or you're a Sam backer. Um, I, I think um, Duke's versatility is something that's really going to uh, help our defense because of the multitude of things he can do. From a leadership perspective, is there additional comfort that you've got your quarterback back and uh, kind of a defensive leader in Daniel Green? Yeah, uh, two things on the offensive side. Obviously, having Will back is so important because, you know, he just – when he comes in the room, I mean, everybody knows that, that um, you know, he kind of lights up the room and is, is one of the guys in charge. Um, but I also think having all those offensive linemen back really helps Will Howard and it helps all of us. There's nothing more fun than coming into a meeting here and running into those four old guys. And then you throw Biebs, who's who's obviously getting older as well. But those guys, um, you know, from Gilly and, and Duff and, and KT, um, to be able to get those guys back from a leadership standpoint has been is going to be really helpful for the amount of young offensive linemen that we have returning. Uh, and then Daniel Green and Austin Moore. I think you, you partner those two up from a leadership standpoint. Um, we're really lucky to have uh, two inside linebackers that have played as much football as those two guys have and, and um, have the respect of the team uh, and coaches by how they conduct themselves, how they play, how they practice, how they prepare. And it's tracking the progress from an injury standpoint to Taylor Poitier as yeah, well he's, as Kobe uh, Savage. Uh, yeah, um, Taylor's probably a little bit further ahead than Kobe just in, in, in when that happened. Taylor's been cleared for individual, but for non-contact. So uh, it's just getting TP up to speed. Uh, he's further along than he was last year. 
and he's used to it, uh, so he understands what the road ahead of him. But uh, we're excited to have TP back, and I think he'll be able to do more things as the spring goes along. As far as Kobe, um, he's straight line running right now and is able to get up to full speed. He won't do any contact. I think by the end of end of spring, he'll be in a lot more change of direction, um, agility drills. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited because Kobe will be full go once we get back from you know our May break, uh, and he's another guy with tremendous leadership skills. You lost your top two uh, nose guards. Where where are you? Do you think in, yeah, in that uh, respect? Uso played an awful lot of football for us. You know it's hard to it's hard to replace Eli Huggins and what he did for us. And obviously D. Hens was really good. Uh, Damian Alalio is going to help us uh, as well. I, I think. You know, when you throw Damien into a, a third and fourth goal situation and he's able to, to walk people back in a, in a Big 12 championship game, gave him an awful lot of confidence. So you got uh, Damien, you got Oos, um, and then Javon Banks, uh, we were able to bring him in. I think Javon could be a guy that could be a swing guy, that could be an end as well as a, as a nose tackle. We'll find out as we go through the spring. Everybody's going to have to play end a little bit because we're down so many guys there uh, because of season-ending surgeries. You obviously are replacing a couple older experienced guys at receiver and bringing in some new pieces and players who haven't played as much. How important is the spring for creating a report with Will and the other quarterbacks? Yeah, you know, we lost some guys, but we still have Phillip back. Um, we still have RJ back. They have a great rapport uh, with Will. So, um, you know, you lose Cade and you lose Malik, and, and those two guys um, had great careers here. You add Keegan to the mix. We have a lot of young guys we're really excited about. Um, ben Sennett uh, arguably was one of our better receivers at the end of the season. Uh, ben had um, some surgery, so he's out all of this spring. So it gives uh, guys like Will Swanson and, and Garrett Oakley and, and Lofton and Sonner an opportunity. So, um, you know, some of that you're gonna you're just going to miss on, you know, gaining that rapport with your quarterback. But that's what that's where the summer is so important. And as far as the quarterback position goes, I think last year at this time you probably knew who your order was potentially going to be. How do you go about establishing that heading into next season? Quarterback or corner? Quarterback. Uh, yeah. Well, um, you know, all of them are here. I think that's a good thing. Uh, Rubes, I'm excited to see how much he's grown. I'm excited uh, to see how much Adrian Lahr has grown because Adrian was down on scout team the entire year. Um, so, you know, you don't really know what he picked up on, but, um, you know, just listening and sitting in on, on, on CK's meetings, uh, Adrian's a really sharp guy. Uh, and then um, having Avery Johnson come in early to learn. I know that Avery's already put on close to 15 pounds uh, in just a few months. Um, Parker Cavanaugh is another guy that uh, is part of that room, and and they got to learn from Will and really learn from from Rubes, just because Rubes played a little bit, but Rubes has been involved in game planning, and I think it's a real healthy position right now uh, at quarterback. We'll have really good competition there. And then looking at the defensive back with corner, having to replace yeah. Julius Brents and Echo Boido, how do you go about working in those guys? Because that's obviously an important position. Yeah, as well. it, it's really important. We have a lot of uh, depth and, and uh, a lot of great competition. I think that's the position I'm excited about, where a lot of the guys are are here that are going to be competing. Um, you know, Jacob Paris, I think, is a terrific football player and uh, just is really going to come into his own. Uh, Keenan Garber, who um, came out of nowhere and played pretty well in the Big 12 championship in the Sugar Bowl, uh, is now going to be a corner full time. So I'm excited about him. Jordan Wright. Who we were, we were able to redshirt last year? Justice Clemens, we were able to redshirt last year. Um, both junior college kids that that I I know the year under their belt of learning the system is really going to help. Darrell Jones, um, and I think he had a vertical of 41 plus inches, and he's a he's a legit 44 kid that can really roll. Um, just having him another year in the system, just continuing to learn what we're doing. Uh, and then Omar Daniels, who's played an awful lot of football for us uh, in, a, not, in a reserve backup role. He's Omar's got confidence. So the fact that we have all those guys at the corner spot uh, vying for playing time, plus I think it gives us um, more of what we probably had in 2021 with Reggie where we could put one of them at the nickel spot. Um, and uh, it'll be great competition with those guys. You alluded to, to this earlier, Coach, but um, I'm just curious, what what is the unfinished business that you speak of? Um, 
just we're not done. We're we're just getting started in my mind, and um, and I think all of us as players, coaches, feel that as far as not unfinished business of where. We should finish at the end of the season in totality. I think it's just um, the consistency. You know that that uh, I, I know that we've had these conversations in here since I started, and uh, about being consistent. And um, we were as consistent this year uh, as we've been since I since I've been here. And I think our guys start to see that that you know in this league you're going to lose some football games. I, I mean, it's just. It's so competitive, and, and winning on the road, winning at home, doesn't matter. It's just so competitive, but but our guys are becoming more consistent, and that's what we see as as a program as far as unfinished business, as, as far as just being um, a consistent program. And, you know, staying where we're at is the hardest thing in athletics. It's the hardest thing in competition is you know, we're not going to talk about, you know, winning a Big 12 championship and all that stuff. I, I know what the kids – ultimate goal is um, but to do those things we've got to be more consistent um, you know really Monday through Saturday as we continue our preparation and, and we've got a lot of work to do this spring to decide uh, where our fate's going to be in the summer and fall. There's a real interesting story with this offensive line I I don't think many places in America you have all these six-year seniors deciding to come back yeah and they talk about their love for each other, and yeah. they talk about unfinished business. Tell, tell me the story about this offensive line and kind of how, how the dominoes fell. Well, um, you're right. And the other thing that I'm so excited about with those guys is some kids with their sixth year, I've graduated, sometimes I have a master's, I might as well go test the water somewhere else. Um, and, and that's and that's what we see a little bit in, in uh, our business. Um, but not those kids. And for starters, it's a credit to Connor Riley because they love Connor Riley, and Connor's going to get after him. He got after Gilly today, and Gilly just kind of smiled and laughed and said, this is kind of why I came back because he would have missed it. Um, but those guys are so close, and those guys can hold each other accountable. And what would be fun is to have those guys come up here and you guys just have interview those guys and roast those guys because they're going to tell you stories upon stories. And they are – they never get so nervous, so anxiety. They bring levity to every practice, to every meeting. Um, and those guys love playing the game. I don't know if I'd have said that about Katori Levinson when I first got here. Now – Watching how much that kid's grown, uh, how much I love that kid. That that kid is as good a leader as we have. And his freshman year, he'd tell you the story. I looked at him and I said, "Man, KT, you might as well get on the road. You couldn't do anything right. Was missing things, struggling academically." He laughs at it now and says, "Boy, how much he's learned and how much he's grown." And uh, I, I look at a guy like KT that um, he's on our leadership council. Um, you know, he he was captain of one of our competition teams. Uh, that kid loves being here, and uh, they love playing with each other. One other question on offensive line: Does this you have 116 returning starts among these returning returning starters? Does this have the makings of maybe being one of the better offensive lines in the Big 12 this year? If they continue to improve and they continue to realize that they haven't played their best football collectively. Um, you know, and that's true. I don't think we've played our best football with that crew collectively. And that's why it's so important that we also develop some of that depth so that maybe those guys aren't having to play 75 plays a game for 14 weeks, 13 weeks, that uh, some of the other guys, and then you throw TP into it that uh, we know when healthy, he's, he's an exceptional football player. We have great depth. We have great competition. We have great camaraderie. And if there's a spot you want to have it at, it's in the offensive line. Coach, I know you alluded to it a little bit earlier with Daniel Green, but with him specifically, he's played and started for a better part of four years. What were those conversations like to get him to return, and how important is he not just to the defense but to the team? Yeah, um, you know, we had a lot of conversations. Uh, I didn't think he was probably coming back when we went down to the Sugar Bowl. And then, um, uh, you know, and I understood that. And I was going to always be a resource for him. Uh, a number of people were going to be resources for him. And, and I credit Daniel Green. He did his homework. He and his family back home did their homework to see where he would land, what he needed to do. Um, 
you guys all know this. Daniel wasn't healthy all the last season. He he was banged up the entire season, so he didn't think he put his best film out there either. Um, but then when you see when other kids see that Daniel Green knows that there's more in him, know that knows that the best football for him is in front of him, and he decides to come back, no different than those offensive linemen. Not only decide to come back, but he decides to come back to Kansas State. Um, shows you what he thinks of what we have and what we're building here, um, and uh, the locker room that those kids created. And and it, once again, it's those players that created that locker room. That's a pretty special place to be in. And uh, you get those six-year guys. Um, you know. They're the guys that uh, um, everything runs through in that locker room, in that weight room, in the practice field. That's what a player-led team does. And uh, we'll, we'll, as coaches, be really smart with those guys that are six-year guys. They've done enough spring ball. We've got to try to do what we can to keep those guys healthy. Shoot, a lot of them are going to be 25 years old probably. They, they, we need to make sure that those guys – help the younger players and make sure that uh, we keep moving uh, the program forward and keep the legacy of what Kansas State football is. And it really runs through them. You guys have a really a decent amount of early enrollee freshmen. Yeah. Um, how has the progress with them gone? And how important is it to get them in for this semester? Yeah, it's learning how to do things our way, the K-State way, the players' uh, ownership way. Uh, today's first practice is a great example of it. They, they're going to learn how we practice, run into the football, finishing plays. Um, but they're going to have such a, a, a head start advantage on the guys that come in in June to be able to go through Coach True's program, to be able to go through a practice and know what it's what it takes and what it, what uh, um, the expectations are. Um, excited for those guys. And it's becoming more and more popular. Uh, and we were fortunate. I, I think there was maybe eight true freshmen that came in. And then we've got a couple of uh, junior college kids as well. Is it too early to say what the plan might be at uh, punter and kicker without Ty anymore? Um, yeah, it is really early to say. I, I like the competition we have there. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll play Jack Bloomer being here helps because he's, you know, he, he's punted an awful lot of balls in, in game competition in the Big 12. Um, we'll wait till it gets a little nicer out uh, to bang it outside to see, um, you know. But we have people to compete with him. And, and obviously, you know, having Chris come back, I think Chris learning um, from Ty was really important on, on how you handle yourself, how you handle things, how, how you uh, block out a lot of things. And, and uh, Chris, as we all know, has tremendous talent, and I'm uh, expecting a big year from him. <clears throat> what, what do you foresee being kind of the biggest challenge offensively now and in life without Deuce Vaughn? Um, just continuing to be versatile more than anything. Um, you know, finding whether it's, you know, whether it's DJ to Treshawn to some of these other guys, um, you know, I think a lot of people learn DJ Giddens is a pretty good football player now, and he just does different things than what Deuce did. Um, and having Phillip Brooks back, having RJ Garcia, um, having Seth Porter back um, is another guy that, you know, uh, you think of the perimeter guys is is what we lose with, with Deuce catching the ball out of the backfield and things. And um, you, you don't replace Deuce Vaughn. You know, you just don't do that. Um, but other guys have to step up as well as uh, Colin to be really creative uh, on getting the guys, the correct guys, the ball, uh, and getting the amount of touches and, and, and spreading that out. And this is now your, your third off season, I think, in, in the three three five. How ingrained do you feel like that is now comfortable? Well, we're continuing to try to to evolve it. There's some things that we feel that we're doing really well, and there's some things that we need to improve on as a staff. And so we're still profesh, professional developing and, and getting other ideas and finding some new wrinkles and nuances. It's great because it's, our, it's the third year our offense has gone against it, and CK and Riles and those guys have a lot of things that, that can beat us. And so – we try to take that and say, okay, well, how, how can we make some changes? Because if our offense is figuring it out, uh, all these other offenses that are watching ourselves, Iowa State, TCU, all these other teams that are running it, um, you know, people are starting to catch up to it a little bit. So we have to continue to have some wrinkles, and we'll, we have a lot of them actually this spring that we're excited about trying. And then – I just wanted to ask about the progress of, of, of the fullbacks. I know Jax announced that, that he was going to be transferring yep. and where things were there. Yeah, I'm um, excited for Jax to get his degree. 
number one thing, he's going to have his degree from K-State and, and a big Jacksonine fan, um, and he's going to be successful. Um, we just, as, as, the, as we started to evolve last year, became much more of an 11 personnel team and even a 12 personnel team. And when I say a 12 personnel team, um, you know, whether it's the Ben Sennets to what we're recruiting of the Garrett Oakleys and Lofton and the couple guys that we signed with Will Anxia, um, you know, um, there's a different body type that we went to using a little bit more. And, um, and so that's the one thing is we're always going to be truthful and honest um, and, uh, um, you know, we still have a couple other fullbacks in the program that actually had season ending surgery that we've got to decide what their role is and how can we utilize those guys. How much have you enjoyed watching your guys at the NFL combine and seeing Julius Brent's kind of, you know, introduce himself? Yeah. Um, we had a lot of things going on, so I missed some of it and caught some stuff on, uh, that I had taped, but, uh, Excited to see Deuce. I wasn't real fired up about him doing a backflip because um, I thought uh, that one looked kind of ugly because um, I didn't want him to hurt himself. But uh, I, a couple things on it. I'm excited for what they did at the Combine, and I'm even more excited for our pro day because there's still some things out there. You know, Felix is going to draw an awful lot of attention for the pro day. Malik's going to draw an awful lot of attention for the pro day. Deuce is still going to draw an awful lot of attention to the pro day, as well as all the other seniors, you know, that have exhausted eligibility that didn't get a chance to compete in the combine. There's still a lot of things out there that a lot of coaches, GM, scouts, whoever it is, may want to see. Um, and so I think we'll have a really busy time here uh, for our pro day. You talked about some injuries for guys last year. Was that kind of the product of the season for Nate Matlack and why it unfolded the way it did for him? You know, he had uh, an ankle injury early on, and, um, you know, his is, his ability is so built on speed and turning the edge, and I felt bad for Nate. He just just could not get that thing as healthy as he wanted it to be. It's healthy now. He's put on about nine pounds um, which he knows he's got to continue to push the envelope um, because he, you know, between he and Mott, Stuff, um, Khalid a little bit, uh, we like, you know, we, you lose Felix. You don't replace Felix either, um, just like you don't replace Julius and some of the other guys. But, you know, we have good depth there. Um, but, you know, some guys are going to have to really step up this year. What's been your early initial impression of Avery Johnson now that he's on campus? Just excited about the competitor he is and the fact that he's put on weight already. Um, he can really roll. He can run. We see it in winter conditioning, how much he can he can run and, and change direction and, and has that extra gear. I'm excited to see as we get into the practices um, how he controls our offense. You spoke briefly there about the combine. Um, to see Julius Brent's test among the best corners, what does that say about your strength program and the development that guys have in this program? Yeah, well, we feel we've got the best strength program with Coach Drew in the country, and those guys do a phenomenal job uh, of developing football players and not developing combine guys, but developing football players. And, and then part of that development of football obviously uh, gets those guys ready for the next level.